It may not be the racing from Haydock that grabs the headlines today and in tomorrow either. We've got Desert Crown to look forward to. But of course, away from the action on the track, we've had news coming through and a little bit more flesh on the bones in terms of how next year's fixture list might look with BHA announcements coming out this morning. You've been um, all over that. and. Well. <laughs> I wouldn't say all over. Well, you've been in the Zoom conference. I have. You've, you've had more to do with it than I yeah, have. Yeah, it's dropped nicely in our window. A significant um, press release at noon, that mm. dropped at noon, about the 2024 uh, fixture list from the BHA. And there's an ongoing uh, Zoom conference uh, Q&A. Julia Harrington, Richard Wayman, various other BHA worthies. And I, I don't know about you, when I'm watching the news... It really gets on my nerves when people read from the phones. But I'm going to break that rule yeah. today because I've, I've jotted down a few things. But here are the bullet points. We've got a graphic about how this is going to shake down. These plans are now set in stone. This is what's going to happen in 2024. Take us through them, Stuart. OK, so we kick off, and some of this has been well documented and, and rumoured for some time anyway. Leaked. But the basic... Leaked, <laughs> yes, for want of a better expression. Uh, the principle, um, or one of the principles behind it, will be a premier racing tier with higher prize money, and that will be chiefly affecting Saturdays through the summer. Um, we've got then this two-hour shop window, on a Saturday where three fixtures will be in a protected slot. Now you get an idea uh, of how you can compare that with this Saturday uh, coming up. Additionally, um, not many people will necessarily have seen this one coming, there's going to be a pilot of six Sunday evening floodlit fixtures between January and March 2024. Now that has been a time that has been um, indicated that could be a key betting turnover mm. time. Um, there's going to be a boost to core racing, so moving more fixtures to later in response to customer preferences, a reduction in 300 jump races and moving some flat races from the summer uh, to autumn and early winter, and better quality racing on Sunday afternoons, including premier fixtures. So those, those are the principles behind it. Not much flesh on the bones there. Yeah, the first point I would make here is that I do not envy Julia Harrington, Richard Wayman and Cole. They've not got a strong hand of cards to play here. But how you play that hand is key. And a, a few points to make, and I don't want to come across as old man shakes fist at clouds here, but there are a few points that suggest themselves very clearly. The first one relates to the fixture list on block, the total number of fixtures per year. Now, many people, rightly or wrongly, think that major surgery to the fixture list is needed for racing to progress. That means a significant percentage of the entire calendar yeah. being culled or radically revamped. If that was your desire, this plan is not for you. Uh, a total of 300... Is it 300 jumps fixtures? 300 jumps are uh, races, not fixtures. Sorry, excuse me. Ra not fixtures. Some no. people Ooh, would prefer it if it were fixtures. 300 races, six, fewer than six a week, actually. No suggestion that the flat race calendar is going to be pruned in any meaningful way, only that sub-races in the summer period, um, a pinch point, will be moved towards the autumn and early winter. So if you wanted major surgery in terms of reduction in fixtures... This is just not going to do it for you. Some people will say, good, I like high volume of racing. Some mm -hmm. people will say, that's not what we were, what we were looking for. Secondly, um, how much of a prize boost will Premier Racing receive? Are there any figures on that? I didn't hear any. Um, I I'm not even sure that Saturday racing in that sweet spot is really struggling that much. It seems to go all right. But either way, if it's to have this desired effect of stopping good horses, good prospects being sold abroad, it has to be really substantial. Mm. And if it is to be really substantial, where's that money going to come from and where's it going to be taken from? Mm. Uh, that's potentially significant. And by the way, I think the, the chance of stopping those good young horses being sold abroad, I think that ship sailed quite a long time ago, Stuart. I'm inclined to agree. Um, I, don't think, I don't think it's going to make any difference how much money you pour into the sport over here. We can't match uh, Hong Kong, Australia. Um, gone. Here's an interesting one. Um, does the plus, proposed plus, of a two-hour, golden two hours, protected window on a Saturday, do the pluses of that offset the minuses of telling high-quality aim-up tracks like Cartmel, who raced this Saturday, like Chester, who raced this Saturday, telling them to 
go and take your ball and play elsewhere mm -hmm. much earlier in the day or much later in the day. The other pluses of the protected window uh, offset the minuses, and I'm talking about minuses in footfall, race goer attendance, because this Saturday, for example, if you told Chester you've got to start at 11.30, 11.45, or you've got to start at 4.15 or whatever, same to Cartmel. The effect on the crowds, significant crowds for those two meetings, it would yes. take a blowtorch to them. It would yes, take a agreed. blowtorch to the crowd figures. There's no question about that. So that's a significant negative. Um, six well, Sunday night fixtures. Sorry, on, just sorry, to go make, ahead. The only positive, therefore, can be, of course, turnover. And, and the, the principle is that off, to, off course turnover boost will will more than make up for. But in terms of pleasure and customer experience and people having a, a good day out, it's not really quantifiable on a balance sheet, but mm. it's very meaningful, I tell you that, in terms of your goodwill and people who've been going to those meetings, they have it in the diary months, months ahead of time. That's significant. Most mm. people, as we know, only go racing to it once or twice a yes, year. Yeah. Uh, and, and if they suddenly their favourite meeting, they suddenly don't fancy the time, maybe they'll go to another meeting but maybe not. On to these six Sunday night fixtures, this was a bit of a, a, a curveball, I think not too many people expected this uh, six Sunday night fixtures in the dead of winter between January and March, all weather flat I assume when betting tends to be strong well, it absolutely better be for the sake of the staff who have to service those meetings in yeah. January on a Sunday night. I didn't hear any mention of a compensatory fund for those staff. Maybe there will be in time. Who knows? But that seems driven by the betting industry. A lot of this well, seems driven by the betting industry. And, and to pick up on, on that point, um, last week was Racing Welfare Mental Health Awareness Week in the sport, wasn't it? Are we not just virtue signalling? in this sport about that sort of thing. You mm, can't preach one thing <laughs> and then on the other hand say, actually, forget your Sunday evenings, you're not having them off anymore either. Yeah. You've got to work. That, We're having an 8.30 uh, on a Sunday night in February. It's only six, but... Uh, yeah, but it's, it's, six it's, becomes 12, uh, becomes no. 18, becomes 52. Exactly. So keep an eye on that. That was a bit of a cover. And lastly, and this is, to me, Stuart, um, this is perhaps the most important thing. I am not the greatest expert on this topic. I don't profess to be. I do watch it keenly as a fan uh, and as a media member. Metrics are important. We've been told constantly that the big plus of this wave of changes is that it's finally driven by data, unprecedented access to data from the betting industry. That's great. How about some metrics about what you hope to achieve? Metrics in terms of increase in betting turnover by the end of 2024 as that's the idea metrics in terms of fan engagement old and new metrics in terms of attendance spike this elusive new audience etc put some numbers on it we define your success bha by these metrics and you seem i uh, just asked julie harrington this question and she said very vaguely we don't just cross our fingers and hope well cross your fingers and give us a few numbers mm. tell me what you think this might achieve by 2024 2025 2026 and beyond because the way i look at this and i have consulted a friend of mine who's a high profile accountant and a massive racing fan and a keen observer of this and he thinks that putting a plan like this together with no numbers and no metrics and no strategy and no predictions he thinks it would be laughed out of the boardroom in many a business and and I suspect he might be on the right path in that. Not sure to get on Dragon's Den. Well, yeah. it, it, you want it to go well. Let's, let's well, yes. get this right. You want this to go well. And to reiterate, the hand of cards they're playing with is a very, very tricky one. But how you play it is key. And please show us some belief in your project by saying what you think you can achieve in terms of increased betting turnover, both from home and abroad, potential attendance spikes and losses, in certain quarters audience engagement old and this elusive new fan base what are your metrics and when will we be able to look at this project and say do you know what they did a good job or vice versa um a more general question it's a little bit of a curveball i appreciate um do you have much confidence that the various members who sit on these various committees have really got much idea or much long-termism mm. in the sport? Do you have confidence uh, no, in the way we're going That would be an, an easy um, long hop to say, you know, 
uh, to, to torture a few people. I, I'm, yeah, it's, I'm, not, it's not a leading I, question. I'm not going to do that uh, because I think you could put, you know, Alan Sugar, Steve Jobs, all these guys in charge, and it would still be a very, very tough job. My short answer is I, I, I have major reservations okay. about, about whether this team and this project will deliver the growth and the pluses that they say they are going to do. Mm. Uh, but that's not to say anyone could. It's a really tough hand, but I, I really... Well, it's a sport I, driven by factions. Yeah, but it's it? also a, 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 it's a, a sport driven by fans and money and engagement. And, and yes, premierisation sounds like a great concept. Yes, the golden two hours, the, you know, the, the protected window sounds great. But what bonuses financially will it deliver over time? I'm not sure. I could be I could be a hundred percent wrong, and uh, you know I could be a hundred percent wrong. But uh, well, I, 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 it, it sounds a lot like more like a wish list than a strategy plan. Okay. Um, it is a trial for the time being, so we've got to we've got to run with it. The, seemingly, the emphasis is that it's not a one year deal. It's a two. It's a long, long term, and I get that. But at, at the outset of that, just put some numbers on it. Put some ambitions on it some targets you're telling us you've had all this data all this data therefore you should have some idea about what benefits this plan might yield um just one final question on that point before we touch on today's card um the premierization the saturdays is that going to fly there's been talk of court cases legal action yeah, ah, has been suggested good point i i asked julie harrington what do you think the odds are of a legal challenge and she said she doesn't expect one. She doesn't expect one. I'm trying to put myself in the boardroom at tracks like Chester, who aren't saying much, but they'll be thinking plenty, and they have worked hard to build up and bought fixtures and built up a really strong calendar of Saturdays, six or seven minimum through the summer, and quite a few of those are going to be told to move along the bus, and that is not going to sit well with the, uh, the board at Chester Racecourse, I assume. And what, and what if they don't? What if they say, actually, we're going to go our own way? We're, we're starting at two o'clock. We'll fund this ourselves. Uh, I have an idea that they that will not be a million miles from their thoughts. But uh, uh, you can get 20,000 on the Rudy on a Saturday. Yeah. 20,000 people. You start that meeting at 11.30, 11.45, 4.15, 4.30. See what sort of hole it puts in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, the irony of it, and this, this coming Saturday is an isolated case, I appreciate, but York will have the biggest attendance on Saturday, no doubt about that. Cartmel, Chester, be evens each or two as to which has the second of the highest attendances. Cumulatively, will Goodwood and Haydwell get anywhere close to Chester or Cartmel? they won't. Big boys, big boys will be very, very happy with this plan. Um, they, they, you know, they're, they're in pole position already, and their position is likely to be strengthened by this. So that's a plus for them. But you throw a stone in the water and there are ripples all over the place and there's a bloody big brick being thrown in Racing's pool at the moment. Um, what about, um, to coming back to some matters more immediate, what about today's card? Here, you can pick up your nose. Um, seven races, we're going to have a short prize favourite in the first, the Apprentice Handicap. Um, looks a good opportunity for Kaya Fraser. Interesting two-year-old race. Um, mostly unraised two-year-olds in the second race, but lots of good yards represented. Yeah, I think that the horses we don't know about are potentially the mm. key horses today. Yeah, uh, Divine Comedy is going to be very short in the first. Then we have some two-year-old and non-quantities. John Gosden just getting going with his two-year-olds. He saddles a too-damn, too-darn hot colt. We haven't seen many of those called Bjorn Ironside. Uh, Shatter, Allen, Beelzebub, look the key horses in that tidy sprint handicap race three. Yep. Another sprint handicap race uh, four. I think Swayze might have potential to bounce back in that race. Yeah. He's back on a sound really? surface today. Yeah, I thought you might win that. Catch Cunningham. No, he's, got, he's, he's had various headgear and he's got even more blinkers, headgear yeah, on. Yeah, blinkers today. today. He's temperamental. Uh, Al Asifa, another well-bred Gosden newcomer, is going to be short price in race five. A girl racer looks maybe the star attraction. She looks a pretty smart filly. Yeah, she looked very good on her debut and then she was in very deep on just the second start. And she finished six, but she had loads of 90-odd rated fillies behind her that day. Mm. So she sets the bar high in race six and uh, Vasilisa looks one of the stronger contenders for race seven. But as I said, it's, it's the two-year-olds and the three-year-old unexposed horses who could throw up something interesting here at Haydock today. Sorry, I, I always mean to stay calm and quiet and not I go on about these political can. things, but... The more you get into the weeds, 
uh, of these topics, the more tangly it becomes, Stuart. And yeah. I, I, I want it to all go well. I don't envy the people having to make this plan, but I wish they'd show a little more gumption as regards telling us exactly what we are aiming for in percentage terms. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.